Good evening, everyone. It's been a while since I've done one of these uh, one on one live streams. I'm here with Mark Reinhagen of uh, Hi, everyone. Of Vampire fame. That's what most of you will know him for, though he has done plenty of other things, which I'm sure we'll find time to talk about. And uh, we're just going to kind of have a conversation and a brainstorming session and a and a reminiscence um, of things that relate to the culture war that we find are ongoing in RPG gaming today, because I think we're both uh, shocked and appalled at quite how bad things have gotten. Of course, the thing that looms large in everyone's mind at the moment was the assault on Jeremy Hambly. I should be specific here, some people brought me up on it during gen con but not at gen con at a bar outside gen con he was assaulted by well it's alleged at the moment let's just say that some someone hit him it's alleged to be someone involved in the gaming industry and to be down to cultural and political differences um so yeah i think we both have an interesting perspective on on this uh so how how, how should we start mark uh, How would you like to begin? In the beginning, uh, Satan created the heavens and the earth. <laughs> oh, okay, well, that's, that's the that's the that's the wrong religion. Sorry. <laughs> well, I I figured you'd be an interesting person to talk to because it, I follow you on Facebook. We've had agreements and disagreements. You know, gentlemen can differ, and that hasn't been too big of a problem. You know, we're capable of of disagreeing and still remaining affable and so yeah, forth absolutely. and i've also seen that you you've had quite a lot of flack for just taking um a, a peaceful stance on things for saying that violence isn't a solution and that maybe you shouldn't punch nazis or at least you shouldn't punch people who you say are nazis <laughs> even even when they're not so i think we would we both have that and i think you've got experience relating to this kind of thing because obviously white wolf in in the 90s that was a previous peak of what some people call political correctness and there was also a lot of moral panic around then you had like a absolutely a, a mini satanic panic that that happened around vampire so or not so many <laughs> <laughs> or not so many okay. from the outside i think from the inside looking out it it, it seemed pretty calamitous oh uh, yeah what well, the satanic panic went went global. Uh, we yeah. had problems here with, you know, we had book burnings in Britain, for, for God's sake. So that seemed like a much bigger deal to me. So, um, I mean, take me through that. What's it like being in the, in the eye of one of these one of these storms? Well, on one hand, I'm not going to lie, it's, it's kind of entertaining and, and almost fun, you know? Like, being attacked by fools is something that at first you kind of go, what the hell are they doing? How can they be saying this? And you kind of stand around the office and you're you're on the internet calling up different things that are going on and go, can you believe this? <laughs> and then um, day by day as it sinks in and, and people start calling in distributors, especially uh, distributors who are in the South or, or in places where they're worried about this or have employees, uh, let's say Packers who aren't, you know, gamers, but maybe you, are religious and and then you have all kinds of uh, issues started to pop up and then little by little it sort of snowballs and before you realize it you know you're in a full panic you know you're running out of money um, you're having cash flow problems and um, you know uh, you're starting to wonder wow could this actually do real lasting serious damage to us and and then you know and of course you realize oh yeah we, it already did. You know, yeah. and that's how these things happen is that, you know, and I think from the outside, people kind of go, oh, those idiots. But, you know, if you're the company being targeted or God forbid the person, um, you know, it, it, it's 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 not fun. Um, and and uh, I think the people who do think it's fun throughout are the ones who, you know, enjoy this kind of thing as a dramatic, you know, exercise or or who make their money from entertainment or and all that sort of thing for them this is you know this is part of their their job really you know for better yeah. or worse you know uh i'm not i'm not saying that's necessarily evil that you make your job for doing that but the people who do tend to enjoy it throughout 
uh, the ones who are probably using it for their benefit. But but if you're but if it's a distraction from what you love to do, let's say making games, it, it's it, it, after a while it becomes really bad. So that it really did have a, a a significant material impact on the company. Though. Yeah, it was a bummer, you know. And and uh, you know, I would I would go out. I think I was living for for one wave of it in San Francisco, and you know, everyone would make fun of me and and, and bring it up while we're drinking. And after a while, I was like, you know, please just shut up. Mm. You know, I just <laughs> got out of the office. I'm having my first drink, and you bring that up, and it, and it bumps me out, man. You yeah. Know? Because I don't, I, I personally do not want to be anyone's enemy. You know, I want to be, I don't want to be everyone's friend, but I, but I do want to be somewhat friendly to everyone of every different type of person there is in the world. You know, I, I want, I really work hard at getting along with people. I travel a huge amount. My life is really about traveling and seeing the world. And everywhere I go, I try to make real friends and not try to make anyone angry at me and, and you know and so so for me like having someone hate me for no reason <laughs> it's really weird yeah i, I can dig that I, I get a lot of uh a lot of hate most of it from misunderstanding i think or, or reading into what i've said but i'm not shy of an argument i don't i don't mind pissing people off but I don't see arguments as a reason why you need to hate each other. Yeah, right. see, yeah, I, yeah. I try to like not have arguments, and if, but I try to have debates. And as soon as the debate turns into an argument, then I immediately try to leave and and stop interacting. So yeah. for me, as long as something is a is a, but of course I'm human, you know. And if someone calls me something horrible, like fighting words, as I call them. Like, you know, they use one of the bad the F word or the N word. For me, those are fighting, those are fighting words. Uh, yeah. They call them the N word. Uh, also, the Nazi word, that's a fighting word. Um, you know, and so all these different words for me are like, I, I can't help it. I'm going to get really, really mad. But then <laughs> I try to do my really nasty response and, and, and then just stop interacting with them for a while. <laughs> so. drop, drop the bomb and leave. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, with the satanic panic, some people credit that with being partially responsible for the sheer degree of popularity of, of D and D specifically, saying that it made it seem edgier and cooler. No, and... no, no. You, you don't think that's true? Oh, that's certainly not not no, true in your experience with vampire. No, no. D and D was already insanely popular. Come on, man! It was on uh, ET. You know, kids are playing. Like, kids are playing D and D like crazy. And after the moral panic. You know, there was probably a um, you know million kids who suddenly weren't allowed to play it anymore. Yeah, it was a big deal. I think everyone who lived through that time in America, and I was one of them. I was a kid then during the first, very first wave. You know, we all knew a kid who wasn't allowed to play anymore, and and sometimes the kid would do what he was told, and sometimes he would lie. <laughs> you know, this is this is something that I find really interesting and a kind of um gaming cultural divide between the the old guard which i guess means us these days <laughs> still wrangling with the idea that i'm over 40 now but uh you know we went through all of that and i think that instilled in a lot of us a really kind of um fierce attachment to free expression and a resistance to censorship and a suspicion of anybody trying to tell us that our games were bad and so on. I, I think that landscape has shaped my reaction to what's going on currently. Do, yeah, do you feel the same way? Yeah, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> if anyone tells me that they think my game is immoral, then my automatic instant response is going to be, you don't know what morality is. You're basing this on your war perception what morality is, you know, and I have my own perception and mine is more acute and reasonable and well thought out than yours. And I know that absolutely to the bottom of my heart because when this moral panic happened, I had to make sure. Because I had my father, who's a Lutheran minister, my mother is a social worker, who spent their entire lives, you know, dedicated to helping people, ask me, are you doing something to hurt people? And I couldn't answer without actually searching my soul and be absolutely 
positive that I could tell them, no, this is a moral game. It's about morality. Yeah. You know? So so I know for a fact if I'm working on something that that it's moral, you know? There's no doubt in my mind. Yeah, that's well, uh, just to pause a moment and do like a little, little side thing. I think it's important to uh, establish for the audience who because of the topics we're going to be going into next that we're both politically pretty left wing, right? Yeah, I'm, I've dedicated my life to to, you know, equality, social justice, you know, I I, I you know, I refugees you know, I grew up with refugees sitting at the table of my family, and I would teach them English, you know. Um, the first wave of Vietnamese boat people, we sponsored a family of like seven, mm -hmm. you know, and for years. That was what the whole my whole family did, and I believe deeply in that, you know. I, I, I Gay rights is one of my number one issues. Uh, Fifteen years ago, I was shouting that we should have the best thing to do would be gay marriage and everyone laughed at me you know yeah. <laughs> they laughed they laughed you know i had many friends die in the play you know so yeah it's just weird that people think uh they can actually come up to me they have the audacity to 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 say I'm anything but what i am yeah and it, that that's something that's really difficult for me too i've i've been yeah, you know, firmly entrenched in the bottom left quadrant of the political compass, my my entire adult life, and then and I've always fought for free expression and you know people's rights and so on. Uh, I was kind of peripherally involved in some of the protests in the early nineties over over here about uh, anti homosexual stuff from from the Tory Party here, uh, and it's difficult to have people say and assume that you're some kind of reactionary, right-wing, racist, bigoted person when it couldn't be any further from the truth. And it's yeah, yes. And it's it's because of my left-wing positions that I am so aghast at what is going on currently because you know in talking about the panics of the past that was coming from well in part media sensationalism and the kind of right-wing evangelical lobby, you know, it was coming from outsiders. And something I found very difficult to to grapple with in this current moral and political panic and, and divisions is that the attacks on the hobby that I love and to which I have devoted my creative life to are coming from my tribe on the left. Yes. <laughs> it's bizarre. Like, how did this happen? Like, how do we get here? It, 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 I would never have predicted this. I would have laughed at someone 10 years ago who said, you will be attacked by people from the left for being, you know. Yeah. And I would have been like, what? That's, <laughs> no, that's never going to happen. I'll bet you a million dollars. And yet. And yet. Uh, didn't you get some kind of foreshadowing of that with the fuss that happened around, I'm thinking of gypsies? The, the 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 white wolf book oh yeah but the thing is i i actually kind of agreed with that like yeah like, like you know like 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 early on back in the 90s especially we did some really stupid things <laughs> you know and, and i kind of dropped the ball because i was so busy writing new games i wasn't checking this and some of the vampire clans were definitely not cool and, and some of our, our, you know, but but back then it was completely different. You didn't have the internet to make it so easy to, I mean, you had the internet, but it wasn't really a place you could search for information. Yeah. You know? and you, you had social had media. Had a library and you didn't know all this stuff about, you know, uh, um, how that would be offensive to this group. It just wasn't widely known. Yeah, and so social media hadn't really taken off yet, had it? It was, it was really. It was a different time, and we screwed up. And honestly, when that stuff came up, I was like, "Yeah, we screwed up. We got to redo it." Yeah, and we did. You know, every chance we got, we redid it. You know, <laughs> and, and I think back then that people actually gave you credit for redoing it and fixing it. And today, the the outrage is just instant. The outrage trap is instantly set. As soon as you do something wrong, it's snapshot, 
and then nothing you do or say will fix it. You yeah, know? it's like you, there there are no redos or is no fixing things. Like you are, so you're either hero or scumbag. You know? <laughs> yeah. And well, it's I- like, wow, okay, geez. Like, <laughs> what? Am, how am I supposed to, you know, fix this? You know, it's weird. You so you're not allowed to. Yeah. So what's happened now? Um, just kind of peripherally moving on the same point. You, the new White Wolf, or whatever it's called now, with with Vampire Fifth Edition coming out, there has been a fuss that apparently you've been infiltrated by Nazis who are hiding secret messages yes. <laughs> in your alpha drafts. Um, yeah. What what is going on with that? What I I you know I mean I, I mean they're bit, literally people are calling me a Nazi. You know, this has happened over and over again. I've gotten, you know, threats saying, you know, you're a Nazi and we're going to get you. And it's because at one point I did a post a long time ago, Gamergate, and and I said, I don't really know what's going on, but what I hate is that gamers are just hating each other. And I think what we should do is maybe start having a dialogue and what I would like to do on my wall, my post right now, is to instead of, you know, an airing of grievances that we instead talk about, you know, there are differences in a reasonable, calm way. And a bunch of far right people and also on the other side, some far left, right, right people uh, or whatever it's called in Gamergate. I still don't fully understand <laughs> that whole thing or who's what. I really don't. I don't, and I don't really want to know. It's not <laughs> worth my time to ever learn it, right? I, I, I'm never going to learn that because it's just not <laughs> for me. I, I did write a book on it, but uh, I know we okay, disagree. Sorry. I, <laughs> I, I mean, if, if it's your area of fascination, great. But for me, it's just like, wow, okay. That is a rabbit hole that I might never emerge from. <laughs> well, you know? I, I don't want to go too deep into it. Um, at all, but for me, it was another sort of wake up that people will lie about you, lie about what you believe, lie about what you're doing, lie about what your values are, and that lie will take off and get entrenched, and there's nothing you can do to break free of it, just just like you were saying. Yeah, so, absolutely. So anyway, so the leftists on this page got really angry at me for saying that that they were that I didn't understand what their issues were. But the tactics and the words, the things they were saying on my wall were equally as horrific and disgusting as what the other side was saying. And so I said a pox on both of your houses. You're both using here in front of my very eyes. I don't know what you're doing behind my back. I have no idea about the docs and all that's going on. But right here in front of my eyes, I can see that you're both sides are being, you're being horrible to each other and me. And it is obvious to anyone who would read this page that you're both being horrible. And so that's when they started insisting that I was a Nazi and started doing a whole war against me. <laughs> and, and and that's sort of how it began that I that these um you know that these group of gamers, left wing gamers, have decided that I'm their enemy. Because I set up I said to them a pox on both of your houses. And that's how it began. It's as easy as that. And, and so, they, they, they've been harassing me on a daily basis ever since. If you if you don't mind talking about it, what have they been doing to you? I mean, they get they recruit people and they do occasional attacks on me. So they'll re- so I of course have over time. At first, I started a dialogue for about a year. I didn't kick them off my page, and I just sort of kept a dialogue going with them and. And they would sort of get better, and then they would get way worse, and then weird ones would just swear and curse at me and call me these horrible names. And finally, I was just like, okay, I'm just kicking you all off. And so, but then they start started doing these attacks and just sending waves of people in or, or fake names or whatever, and just doing the, you know, just taking over a whole thread and basically doing harassment. And of course, their big thing is you can't do online harassment of people. But, but, of course, that was yes. exactly what they were doing to me. Yeah. And, and, and it's funny because I have these horrific arguments with right-wing people. 
Um, many of them, my good friends, by the way, because I have friends who are different than me, which I think yeah. is a normal thing to do. And, and I have friends who are evangelical Christians and I have friends who are libertarians and I have friends who are, uh, you know, uh, paleolithic conservatives, you know? <laughs> but they're, they're, they have something interesting to say sometimes. I'm their friend. Anyway, from them, I haven't had any problems, but from the, this group of left wing people, a specific group, I don't think all left wing people are like this, but, but, but the specific group of gamers who have their own little secret chats and are organized and whatever was going on, you yeah. know, they, they harass me. And, and it, it's non-ceasing, you know? Uh, um, my friends get messages warning them away. Um, it, it, I don't know, it's just pointless um, to go on and on about it. But it, it's, just a, it's just one of those things, you know? And other gamers that have talked to me, and they say, what should you do? And I said, well, first of all, never go public. If someone threatens your life, do not go public, because if you do, you're gonna be harassed for life. You know, yeah. so so this has happened to many game designers, and and they're not going to say anything because so they know it makes it worse. For me, it's too late. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, too for me too. But that that's interesting. So you've been contacted by other game designers, writers. Oh my god! Well, right in the now there's a huge panic because of the the horrible events at Gen Con. You know, which I don't know the facts about yet. I've been waiting to find out, but 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 anyway, there, there's a whole backlash on the right now, and they're targeting uh, left wing game designers, and so you know there's bad actors on, on both sides, extremists on both sides who who take things way way too far, and, yeah. and, and 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 you know, and that's the main thing I preach is that us reasonable gamers who don't believe in punching people, who don't believe in screaming curses at people who believe in debate, you know, not bitter arguments, you know, that we have to stand up and basically say to people on our side and the other side that no, that's not right. We're here to game. Take it out on the board. Take it out on the table. You know, yeah. like, like, what are you doing? Yeah, Just you're gamers stop. first. Yeah. We're gamers first. Like, we're the outcasts. We're the geeks. We're the ones who everyone picked on. You know, it, isn't it just so blindingly obvious to pick on other people to get over your own fear and, and, and self-loathing for being picked on? Isn't that yeah. just so obvious? Yeah. Isn't there a better yeah. way to deal with that, those bad feelings than just finding someone else and just making them into a worm? And make yeah. the life miserable. Yet yeah, that's exactly what they're doing. Both yeah. on both sides. The people get all angry. They're basically trying to hurt someone the way they were hurt. Yeah, and that's pathetic. It really is. I mean, I'm hoping this conversation will at least be a start <laughs> of trying to. It's probably far too hopeful, but some sort of start to healing, some sort of rift and getting some conversations I going. Hope so. yeah. I, I hope some people, other people will come forward to have conversations with me on this channel or in blogs or something where we can hash out these differences sensibly. But um, I hope the, the vast majority of gamers are very reasonable, very nice, very moderate, you know, especially yep. in real life. We all get a little excited online. We all say things that we get online. <laughs> And, and that is the problem with the online world. But in person, gamers are almost universally pretty nice, you know, yeah. especially compared with normal people. I mean, if I anywhere I go in the world, if I find out there's a gamer club or a bar or anything, I know I can go there. And people will be pretty nice. Yeah. You know? Whereas there are bars I've walked into where I, mean, I was in <laughs> trouble the second I walked in. <laughs> I, that has never happened to me at a gamer place ever. Yeah. Ever. So, so we, we we talked about how these moral panics can affect people's bottom lines. I would expect that this current situation we find ourselves in similarly is going to end up causing a lot of collateral damage to a lot of businesses and and, and people. Um, you've talked about other designers who are worried but are keeping quiet out out of fear. 
of that. I think it's too late for you and me, and I'm far too pugnacious to, to not speak up against these things. Um, yes, and we talked right. about, I cannot keep quiet. Yeah, it's and we, uh, we, we've talked about the online harassment. I just want to, um, not really as part of the conversation, but just as kind of for people who are listening, other, some other things that have happened to people. So personally, I was harassed uh, to the point of suicide, though that's not their fault exactly. I'm, I'm a depressive. Um, they just picked on me on a bad day and yeah, it drove me to that edge because I just felt like I was so completely alone and out of step oh with, with everybody else. It, yeah, it, it was. But what this wasn't trolls. This wasn't anonymous people giving me harassment. It was people using their real names. It was authors. It was people from TV. <laughs> you know, they seem to have free reign if they're doing it for what is perceived as being the right reasons to go after people in this way. Um, I think anyone who's been targeted by either the, the left or the right in one of these panics will tell you that their products get review bombed. And that can have uh, a long lasting effect on your business, particularly if you sell electronic goods via the, the long tail model, you know, the bad reviews will, will impact you. Um, I, have been refused work, not because of the quality of what I do, but because people didn't want my name associated with the project uh, because of the reputation of all this. I know other people have been in the same situation. Censorship has been brought to platforms where it didn't exist really before, past the, past the obvious because of these panics. There have been walkouts on game awards when someone they didn't like <laughs> got an award. It, that's all kinds of these kinds of things go on and it is relentless and it dogs you forever. It, it never goes away in, in the internet age. And like we said earlier, the, the bullshit you know, spreads faster than the truth. Yeah. So I just want, I just want to make that <laughs> clear, not really as part of the conversation, but to say that this is a serious problem. And it's much more serious than the moral panic of the 80s and the 90s that d and 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 Vampire went through. It's much worse because, as you say, it doesn't go away. It yeah. just gets worse and worse and worse. And there are only two possible outcomes. One is that we divide the game industry into two warring camps and no one buys each other's product and everyone hates each other and we're all at war up and down the line. Or somehow the people in the middle, the people who are reasonable, say to the other people, just get out, leave. We're not buying any of your stuff anymore. You know, we want to have one game industry. And, 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 and honestly, I don't know what's going to happen. I would love to say that, you know, the, the middle is going to stand up and kick them out. But obviously this doesn't really happen in politics <laughs> on the yeah. national level very often, right? Yeah. Famous are taking over everywhere. You know, yeah. on the left, we have them ruining Venezuela, you know, on the right, they're destroying Turkey and I can go on and on and on. And it's insane. It's insane. And, and if gaming goes the same way, what a loss, because gamers should know better. We were the ones picked on. We were the ones on the outside looking in. We were the ones who gave each other shelter from the worst of the world. And now we are turning all of our talent for 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 fantasy and and, and vitriol and hate and, and hero heroism. And we're basically taking all these talents we have for inventing stuff and we're using on each other as weapons. We've weaponized gaming and we're using on each other. And it's 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 horrible. It's the yeah. worst thing that could possibly happen to gaming. And it makes me so sad. Yeah, me too. Uh, and it, I, I don't know why, but it still manages to surprise me that people are this nasty. And it's been going on for me for the, you know, eight years now. Eight years? Yeah, about that long. I think 20, it's either uh, 2010 there was some stuff. Then 2012 I wrote a, I wrote a blog piece uh, with an ill thought out title, <laughs> which was about censorship and 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 bad, how you can use bad events and so on in storytelling and games. 
So this was in the wake of the um, Tomb Raider reboot. And there was a big fuss about the cutscene where it seemed like she was about to fall prey in a sexual way to one of the, the baddies in the level. Um, and there was a huge internet backlash against that. And I wrote a long blog, foolishly titled In Defense of Rape, talking about how you know this can be a powerful, if awful, thing in stories um, and how we shouldn't censor anybody and how there's no... Yeah, horrible title, but I completely agree with your sentiment. You don't yeah. see anyone telling movie makers, oh, you can never have a rape scene ever, ever again. Because you know what? That would be whitewashing reality, and that would be doing a disservice to the victims, right? Yeah. No one would ever suggest to move to film companies, oh, you can never have a rape scene, ever, yeah. right? Yeah, but and yet yeah, that seems to be what they, what they want. People can say that, oh, you can't have any reference to rape because that's terrible. And I'm like, wait a minute, I, I'm the artist, you know? Not only that, <laughs> yeah. but, but every game master and player in role-playing, we're all artists. We're all inventing storytelling. And we should all have, in a responsible way, uh, the right to do this. Now, if someone, you know, in their group has been raped, let's say, male or female, yeah. Then, yeah, maybe you should avoid it. You know, like, yeah, maybe, or if they come up to you privately and say, no, I'm ready, let's do this, then you can. Yeah. But, but you know what's saying that we can never do this stuff? That's crazy. It, I'm, I'm not. Basically, gamers saying, oh, games aren't art. Well, screw <laughs> yeah. you. Games are art. They're the most important art maybe ever invented. Because they're an art form about the process of things. Movies are about stories told to you. You can watch a story told. They're very important. They teach us about life and how it's lived and how to live life better. And that's a very important thing. But what games teach us is the process of living, how things happen, how they flow, how they go from A to B to C to D. And no other art form does that like a game does. And, and ironically enough, given the problems we find ourselves yeah, in at the moment, yeah. they so, teach you empathy. You know, they you teach you empathy. Like, yeah. Even a stupid game like Monopoly gives you empathy. <laughs> Any game can give you empathy, but role playing games, especially, are unparalleled in their ability to give empathy. There yeah. will be a day in which role playing games will be used almost exclusively in therapy. Well, not exclusively, <laughs> but they will be the main way of therapy. Because honestly, there's no better way to learn or get over some emotional problem than a role playing. We've all seen it. We've all yep. seen role playing games transform someone's life. Those are those, some of the most special moments in my living memory as people being transformed by a role playing game. And all that's at risk, it feels like. It is. It really is. Who knew? Uh, who knew? And, and the only way to stop it is for people to stand up and go, you know, not once, not twice, but every day, you're going too far. Calm down, or I'm not going to be your friend anymore. I'm going to cut you off completely. Yeah. You so know? what what you were saying earlier about having friends all over the political spectrum, religious spectrum, all the other things that divide us, I think that is something that is hugely important, much much you just said about cutting people off. I think it is really important to retain those links with other people who have different points of view. And when I look at the fractures that are happening and how everything seems to be moving to the extremes, I can't help but wonder how much of that is down to a lack of communication. We all seem to have, well, not all of us, but a lot of people seem to have closed themselves off into a little echo chamber of people that only ever agree with and reinforce their views. I mean, not a day goes by when you don't see some message on Facebook saying, if you don't agree with opinion X, then you know, unfollow and never talk to me ever again. Yeah, that seems to me to be a, a huge mistake. <laughs> yes, yes, it's insane. It's, it's completely wrong. And I think Facebook is basically designed wrong. You know, it's designed to encourage bad behavior rather than to create good behavior. 
Which is why one of the big projects I'm working on right now, which I know I told I wouldn't talk about, but I'm just going to mention a little bit of it. That, 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 <laughs> that it, it's about a mobile social network that uses gaming and gaming devices to reward good behavior and reward people who help each other and are nice to each other rather than reward the jerks who, who kind of entertain us and, and, and our own weird demons of our of our identity that, that entertain us as well by responding to their horrible thing with our own horrible thing, right? I mean, that we, we can design better social networks and we're gonna have to because, you know, we're all on Facebook because that's the only communication device that works for anyone over 25, right? Yeah. We have to, but you know what? If it keeps doing this, if it doesn't fix itself, then there will be an, a new thing and it will take over. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you know what? I hope to have been some small way part of that, of either fa Facebook fixing itself or something replacing it because, because gosh, humanity will not survive another yeah. 20 years of this. It won't. I mean, it, it's just, because it's not just gaming, by the way. Like, we're talking about gaming right now, but but my friends in the construction industry said, yeah, it's insane, man. You know? <laughs> you know, the doxing and everything. And I'm like, in the construction industry? <laughs> yeah. You know, in the restaurant industry, in the bar industry, in the wine industry, in the hotel industry. Like, every industry is going through this, right? Yeah. Also, it's just we're weird. most aware of this. <laughs> but we're aware of this because this is our place, right? Yeah. And I think we do have an important perspective due to these previous moral panics. I think in gaming, video gaming as well, but in tabletop gaming especially, I think we have a useful perspective on it. Absolutely. We have a – our perspective is taking over. Just like geek culture took over the world, you know, gaming culture took over the world. And, and, and now with augmented reality, you know, coming in, it's, it, it, that's going to take over the world. I mean, that means role-playing is going to take over. I mean, and, and uh, you know, I'm not going to help that happen if you guys are still being mean to each other. That's all I'm going to say right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, part, I will not make that happen if you guys keep this <laughs> up. Now, cut it out, everyone. Cut it out. Part of the problem we face, I think, is the way in which social media content is is brought to us by algorithms. So if you show that you like something, it shows you more of that thing rather than showing you a diversity of things or an opposing viewpoint. Um, and that combined with the tendency for people to share block lists and things like that. I mean, even if you go out of your way to communicate with people and engage with content that is different to your own point of view or different to your usual friendship circles. You can often find yourself not in an echo chamber, but in an echo prison because everyone else has cut themselves off from you and the content that you get served, unless you actively go searching for something else, is stuff that already agrees with you. So th there's no escape, really, even if you make a concerted effort to see other things. Yes, yes, and it's uncomfortable that people posting on your wall things you disagree with. It is yeah. uncomfortable. There's times I swear at people on my screen, <laughs> like, what the hell? It, holy crap. But you know what? It's better than not seeing their comments. Yeah. You know, it's the same reason when I wake up, I always read first to, not first, but soon, two websites that I really don't like. And that is Huffington Post and Drudge. Yeah, I, but I do it to see kind of what the two ends are thinking, right? Yeah, I have to. I'd much rather just read something more moderate, like a newspaper. Yeah. You know, I mean, our our divisive event is uh, Brexit. Obviously, um, <laughs> I don't want to get too uh, sidetracked into this. Do people argue about that, like on the streets and among friends, at a huge oh. argument? Oh, hell, hell yeah, yeah. Really? It's, because, it's, because among expats, like I've never met. A British expat who doesn't think it's the stupidest thing ever. <laughs> well, they're all foreign traitors, you see. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, oh. So I, I try to make an effort to read the, the, the right-wing tabloid press to understand or try and understand that perspective. And I try. I don't often succeed, but I try not to just write off people on that side of the argument as stupid because that's not helpful, is it? You know, calling someone racist or xenophobic or 
an idiot or whatever. It doesn't forward the conversation. Yeah, you can't persuade someone with that. Yeah, you can't. It just it just doesn't doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. Um, the thing about also is that you know the only way you can truly talk to someone and convince them of your ideas is first of all going to believe in your ideas and the power of them more than you believe in your power to punch them. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but, yeah. but, but secondly, you also got to listen. You know, like like I have a friend who who was a former Nazi and now he spends his life. Um, uh, working with um, people from that way of life uh, in Quebec, and, mm -hmm. and 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 basically working with them to sort of bring them around, and he believes it saved his life, and that that he, he is so much happier not being in that world, and he says that most of them want to get out and just need a way to get out. The only way to do that though is by listening to them. And I believe this is true not just for Nazis, but for all of us. You know, just listen to someone. You're, if your ideas are strong and and, and true, you're not going to be convinced by them. <laughs> That's just foolish. You're not suddenly to become go from left as a Nazi, although that does happen, right? Yeah, yeah, the it does. Extreme leftists who flip become extreme rightists. You know, like well, that's where that's where the Fox News people all came from. They're all like happy hippies in the '60s, and then they got old, and they all became <laughs> right wing Trump voters. Right? Yeah, yeah. Right. So it does happen, but you cannot walk in thinking that way. You got to walk in thinking, no, I'm going to listen, and my strength and my ideas are strong enough that I will be okay. And, and 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 opening your mind up like that constantly is the only way in which society works, democracy works. And it's okay if you change your mind, and it's even more okay if they change their mind. Yeah. Um, so I just want to kind of uh, put an end cap on this part of the conversation uh, with something more positive, and then we'll talk about what you're what you're working on, and I'll, I'll let you shill your stuff for a bit. Um, so, what can we actually do about this? Do you have any? positive ideas moving forward about how we can just take some of the heat out of this cultural yeah, war that's going you on. Know, I, I'm so busy right now, but I actually started a book that, and, and I've been doing these experiments on Facebook, uh, uh, not only my own name, but, but, but I have a couple different, Oh wait, wait, can I say this? I might get in trouble. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, social yeah, networks. Know. I have a variety of names. I'm an experiment. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I'm experimenting with different ways in which you can approach people that is less or more likely to start fights, that's less or more likely for people to learn things, for you to learn things. And, and, uh, and I'm basically writing a book called The Internet Survival Guide, which is all about how to make and, and, and exist the internet in a way that's positive rather than negative. Because let's face it, for the most part, our presence on the internet is causing more harm than good. And that's yeah. why, and the reason I know that is that things are just getting worse and worse. So of course that must be true. A majority of us must be doing <laughs> something wrong each and every day to yeah. get so much worse. And so it's about how we can do things better. And, 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 and you know what I think? The, the key thing that people need to realize is that the nasty truth of the internet is that everyone's trying to manipulate you. Right, mm. and, and it's like living in this advertising. It's like living in Times Square, you know, each and every day. And people think that they're stronger than that, that they're tougher than that. They can't be taken over. Um, but the truth is that you inflict yourself with this information. Like, let's say you listen to Alex Jones just because he's fun and and wild, and it's just entertaining. Well, you yeah. know what? You're actually imprinting your mind with his ideas and eventually he's going to win. Right? Mm. Like, like if you could have a conversation with Alex Jones, that's different, but using him as your media fix is dangerous. Right? Just like using a, a Farrakhan, you know, as your, <laughs> yeah, it's just crazy. Like, don't do that. You know? And so we have to sort of, learn these tricks, you know, but mainly we have to, you know, stop manipulating our friends 
Because right now we're all trying to manipulate them instead of talk to them. And we should realize <laughs> that we are very easily manipulated. Easily. And the only way to prevent it is by figuring out how, you know, like, first of all, never, ever, ever watch video news. Don't ever watch <laughs> with someone talking to you. Watch clips from the war so you know what's happening. Watch video clips. A news reporter's fine, but never listen to someone at a desk telling you what they think, ever. Because mm. that imprints it on your mind. You, you cannot overcome it. Read your news. You know, read all your information and treat your friends like friends. Don't stop manipulating them. <laughs> Though we're trying to manipulate people right now into being more peaceful and cooperative. <laughs> well, I don't see the difference is I don't think we're trying to manipulate them. We're, we're talking about the issue in a way. We're being very upfront. You know, manipulation has a variety of steps that you do that makes it manipulation instead of mm -hmm. just trying to convince someone. Manipulation is you use logical fallacies. Manipulation is that you appeal to their emotions and you try and twist them in ways that suit you. Manipulation means that you lie a little bit and you uh, um, avoid telling the truth that's going to hurt your case. If you're being yeah. honest, you tell the truth, even if it does hurt your case, and you hope that that makes them trust you more yeah. than if you're being honest. Uh, that book sounds interesting. You'll have to let me be a beta reader or, or I something. Will, I will, I promise. I I, I've thought about doing a, a book myself um, or, a, or a video series or something because basically in, internet and media literacy is is terrible. Um, and I think that would go a long way to solving a lot of the issues. I do have a book recommendation uh, for listeners. Uh, Violet Blue's book, uh, Smart Girls Guide to the Internet, I think is, is the title. Uh, even though it's aimed at women and their safety and security and so on online, it's it's a good read for anybody. So I would heartily recommend that to people. I will order it. Sounds fantastic. Yeah. So so the positive ideas we've had then is to have conversations like this um, and not debates, to, not arguments. Yeah. Um, to use media in moderation and make sure you get a lot of different points of view. Um. And I would say, I uh, did a video on this earlier today, that it's important in these kind of discussions and debates to argue the points that you're presented with, not to try and presume or assume that the person you're talking to is dog whistling or they mean something they haven't said. A address the best form of their argument rather than doing that. And you'll have a far more productive debate and you'll be uh, far more likely to persuade people. Thing. Yeah, but, but don't... Don't don't nitpick them to death. Um, um, assume they meant the best version of what they tried to say. Yeah, and and forgive, forgive people. Everyone cocks up and makes mistakes from time to time, and in the internet age, that can seem like it's going to last forever. But we should be willing to forgive and forget. And game theory supports me, so deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> So let's uh, let's talk about what you're doing. I mean, uh, you were telling me earlier you've got your uh, you've got your own company, Make Believe Games, and you're kind of segueing into computery stuff. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Well, well. First of all, this fall we're doing a, a whole new LARP thing uh, called Game of Fangs in Lviv, Ukraine. Support Ukraine, folks! Please support Ukraine. Uh, um, and it's just a fantastic city, part of the Austro-Hungary Empire. Uh, it's an incredible historic town, so amazingly beautiful. And our location is by far the best LARP location I personally have ever seen in my life. It, it is utterly fantastic. Uh, it's Game of Fangs. And the way we're doing it is I'm trying to do a whole new thing on, uh, on, on LARP, and that is I'm trying to combine some of the techniques of mega games, you know, the, these games they used to use to, to, to test, you know, presidents on what they would do in a crisis. It was developed by the Rand Corporation in the 50s. And now mm -hmm. there's a whole mega game movement, you know, uh, maybe you heard of the one where they had the UFOs going down. Shut Up and Sit Down did a fantastic, uh, of just, I love Shut Up, Shut Up and Sit Down, by the way, everyone from Ukraine, <laughs> uh, UK, I did, they're a great video cast. Um, but anyway, um, so anyways, it's basically adding board game features very lightly 
to LARP to, to give people a point, uh, a thing to do. So anyway, we're doing yet another play test um, this fall, and then we'll do, be doing the big one in the spring. Uh, and uh, uh, hopefully it'll all you know uh, lead to uh, a Kickstarter. Cool. You have to let me know about that. I'll help promote it for you. Yeah. Um, you worked with a, a great friend and collaborator of mine, uh, Brad McDevitt, on Zombie. Do you yes, know, tell, me, yes. tell me a little bit about that. Nobody draws zombies better than Brad. Is oh, Brad said. is amazing. I love Brad. He's fantastic. Hi, Brad. Hopefully he hears this. Uh, <laughs> uh, what we're doing, which is very, very exciting, is we're doing uh, open game license fifth edition version of I Am Zombie. And uh, uh, and we're doing it with all the extras, with dice, cards, um, and the cards will be cool uh, in so many different ways. I can't go into that yet. We haven't resolved it all. But anyway, I Am Zombie is coming to you D&D &D fans, and I I'm super excited. And then uh, the whole universe of I Am Zombie is expanding uh, because we're finally uh, going to do Xenofactor. Which is all about the aliens uh, and their agents, who are the, the Xeno factors. Xeno means alien, factor means agent, uh, coming to Earth. Uh, only we're doing it as a, a, a small town um, dealing with some very unusual events and doing it more in fiasco style, um, which I just absolutely love. So I'm very excited about that. And then we're also taking it out into space and we're doing a. a, a <laughs> A, a, a Jupiter Abyss game, all about sort of whalers on Jupiter harvesting helium three and uh, hydrogen uh, from the the clouds, and uh, and that's going to be just utterly weird and fantastic. And uh, so yeah, there's a whole crap load of stuff coming out. I'm, I'm excited. Cool. Sounds sounds good. Um, are you allowed to talk about? Uh... The, the little miniatures game that you did and uh, Exiles, what happened with that? Because I was sure. always curious. Yeah. Because I, I really loved the concept of Exiles and wished it had made it all the way to be becoming a game. Can you yeah, um, yeah, quickly yeah. say anything about that? Well, Exile, in some ways, um, legally I may, may not have to say this, but I, I think it's so vague connection that I can say this. Uh, also, in the contract, uh, I own Exile. So, but but basically, over the years since Exile, kind of turned into this anomaly setting, uh, and this anomaly setting is not only an I Am Zombie, but it's uh, it's 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 Xeno Factor, it, it's uh, Null Foundation, it's all these things, and basically, uh, it's a present day setting. It's our world, but it, of course, it's like World of Darkness is not a world, just more science fiction. But but the whole story behind it is that is that and this is the same stories behind exile we just never fully revealed it is that it's present day Earth, right? So just like Guardians of the Galaxy, there's a whole galaxy out there of things going on, and Earth knows nothing about it because we're under quarantine, and they're studying us. They don't let anyone touch Earth because we're an original, what's called an original culture. Were original. They've been watching Earth for billions and billions of years, and they've been seeding uh, bits and pieces of Earth all throughout the solar system. And so, you know, there's been, you know, if you throw life somewhere, especially if you're a highly advanced culture, uh, science, uh, civilization, you, you can help it. You know, it, it can become wacky shit. <laughs> so, so what's going on under the clouds of Venus and in the clouds of Jupiter and under the ice in Europa and so on and so on is much, much more bizarre than anyone on Earth knows. And, and hmm. that's kind of the setting. Cool. Um, okay, we're, we're just about done. I'll go and check the chat in a minute. And uh, if you can stick around a bit longer and see if there's any sure. questions for you, that would be cool. But was there anything else you wanted to, to talk about? Uh, I just just that uh please people um recently people have been calling me a nazi so even if you think nazis should be punched in the face realize this you encouraging people to punch nazis in the face means that someone could mistake me for a nazi and punch me in the face and if that ever happens at a game convention to me or anyone else i'm gonna be really pissed off at you 
for encouraging <laughs> people to watch people in the face. Just stop. Like, do not encourage people or support it or condone it in any way. Because that shit is stupid. Because right yeah. now, I'm really worried about going to a convention and getting punched in the face by these lunatics who are calling me a Nazi for no reason. Yeah, so am I, but then that's what these people seem to want, is for people like us not yeah, to go to conventions. Not to convention. They want us to not go to conventions. It's crazy. It's stupid. Yeah. All oh, right, so let's have a quick look through the chat and see All if there's right. anything that, that isn't trolling or <laughs> or obscenities. Um, uh, people saying that uh, Vampire First Edition is one of their favorite games of all time. I Yeah, I would have to say that. I played it the same day I bought it, which, as far as I know, was the first day it was properly available and in the UK, and it's had an immeasurably positive impact on my life. So while I have the opportunity, thank you very, very much, Mark. Awesome. Uh, Doc Sammy in the chat says, he grew up in rural Appalachia. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, in the late 90s and early 2000s, got to see the final vestiges of the satanic panic, and it was not pretty. Uh, yeah, well, I think we covered that plenty. And it, it was international. It was that was that was bad. But I think I think we both agree that what's going on at the moment is worse in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sammy also says his dad played D and D during the Satanic Panic in the eighties, and he got to play it, but a lot of his friends could not. <laughs> I think there was a lot of. Um, speakeasy D D play going on in quite a few places <laughs> so under the table uh yeah we had a few people who um their parents didn't like it but yeah we got them their fix um uh, ms luath i hope i'm saying that right says there was the same panic with comic the comic book industry in the u.s earlier uh yeah that was horror comics wasn't it that was um oh what was his name Seduction of the Innocent, that whole book led to that comic panic. Uh, so we've had that. Do you know anything more about that, Mark? Uh, a little bit. I, I have my uh, little sparrows uh, informing me about all this stuff that I don't follow myself. <laughs> so I, I hear from people who are you know, basically appointed to keep me abreast of things in comics. And... Uh, it's wild. Like already, comic books are becoming bifurcated. There's this whole um, uh, wave of people doing comics for people who want it to be the old way. You know, I, I don't want to call them comic gators. I, I don't know. I don't know what terminology is correct, and I don't want to offend anyone. I really don't because I don't know enough. But but already, it seems like there is a movement in comics to split it into. Yeah, it's and a movement in 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 role and role playing and gaming to split it into, and to me that's just absolutely crazy. <laughs> it's interesting though because um, people are right when they say that comics have always been political. Um, All but, art is political. There's no yeah. doubt about it. <laughs> and anyone who says board games aren't political has never played Monopoly. Right? Yeah. When Captain America was punching Hitler in the face, that was propaganda. Pure so, political. Pure propaganda. And it, 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 pure political. <laughs> as much as we have affection for these characters, you know, that those weren't the best stories. But then if you look at something like the X-Men, it was talking about mutants, but really it was talking about race relations in the US and later on about homosexuality and so on. But it was doing it through allegory, which I think is far more approachable. And I think the the way modern comics have been approaching issues is a lot more like Captain America punching Hitler in the face. It's a lot more on the nose. And that, I mean, we were talking about how you have to take the best version of someone's argument. That's what people are objecting to, I think. And what I find interesting is that the, whatever you want to call them, the, the resistance <laughs> in in the comics world, they've gone off and they've made their own stuff rather than trying to co-opt or change the main comics industry and that's an interesting difference in approach between the between the two camps i think and a better one yes yeah. yes um 
I'm talking a lot. You're not saying much. I'll see if I can find no, something sorry, that's, that's sorry. more directed to you. I don't, so, it's, much, I don't know much about that. Is the problem? So. Yeah, I just I just get really uh, anxious about running my mouth off. <laughs> uh, no, no, it's fine. Your show. Uh, you should pontificate a little bit. <laughs> that's what it's all about. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, good question. Where are we supposed to explore safely the darker sides of human nature, if not art, entertainment, and games? Yeah, where it's safe. Wow, yeah. I mean, this is the safe place. What could be safer? Like, what? You want to wait to do that with virtual reality? That would be terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> and I, they'll probably I, ban it. I'm excited about real virtual reality, but that would be kind of intense. You know, but sitting around a table, chewing on chips, drinking a soda or maybe a beer, you know, yeah. that is, that's the perfect place. You know? yeah, all the like, like I know my friend is kind of right wing and I'm really left wing, but in the context of him being a dwarf and me being a healer, you know, maybe we could kind of chat a little bit about the things we normally would never chat about. It's kind of cool. Yeah, and yet the the language is always that oh we must keep these game these conventions safe. We must make the tables safe. Well, what could yeah. be safer? Yeah, no, and I don't, and I don't believe in that. Like, yeah. like people who talk about making universities and colleges safe, like I'm screaming, no, <laughs> no, it's an institution of learning. It's you're supposed to grow up and leave high school and yeah. leave home and go to someplace a kind of safe physically safe but intellectually really dangerous that's the yeah. whole point of it <laughs> you know you're supposed to get like infected by the chemistry department or the poetry department or 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 the african studies department and just go yeah this is the fucking greatest and you're supposed <laughs> to argue with other students and yell at them and say no you're wrong and this is right that's what it was like for me I had a yeah. fantastic time in college. I <laughs> argued with everyone all the time. And it was okay. You know? Yeah, you, you survived. I survived. Yeah. It's safe. What the fuck is that about? How does yeah. that prepare people for life? I thought it was supposed to prepare people for life. Like, mm. like where? I mean, you could go to Syria and show me a safe space. And by the way, if we keep this shit up. America could very quickly look just like Syria. It happened so quickly. Syria five years ago did not look like Syria today. I went there. I vacationed there. I had a good time. No one thought, maybe more than five years, but okay. <laughs> okay. But, 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 but no one when I went there, uh, I'm not going to count other recent times, but when I went there on vacation, no one thought not anything would happen. No one. Yeah. And let's face it, the worst thing that's going to happen to you at the game table is you're going to tread on a D4. That's, that's pretty much the worst. Yeah. And if you do hurt someone's feelings, then stop, apologize. Tell them you won't do it again. And find a way to make it clear to them you really mean it. And then move on. And that's what people do with friends. And even with people who are proto friends, like sometimes you have at a gaming table, you know, people who are not friends yet, but you know what? Treat them with respect, apologize, move on. Yeah. Uh, Vision, Vision Storm in the chat makes a makes a good point that if we say, okay, we'll try and fix things, that's like blood in the water. And if you if you make even a slight concession towards one side or the other, the other side immediately starts screaming at you you know once you give someone an inch they they try to take a mile and i think that is true and i think that's a problem that's particularly bad within within gaming because we have always been so opening uh, so, sorry so open and understanding and and so on for people and we've tried to accommodate them that it has made it easy for us to get these problems um, what do you think i said it again sorry so when you say you, like you're going to fix something, that like you admit in any degree that there is a, a problem with the way games are, yeah. If you make yeah. a concession towards one side or the other, the other side immediately starts screaming. Oh, and when you do, yeah. and when you do make a concession, you know, you give them an inch, they take a mile. And I was just adding to that that I I think this is such a big problem within gaming specifically, 
because we have always been accommodating and welcoming and, and open and tried to encourage people to join in. And so that's made us vulnerable. I mean, I, mean, I consider that bad behavior. Like if yeah. you're accommodating on one side and someone else screams at you, then very firmly tell them, no, I'm, I'm making a compromise and trying to keep everyone happy. And if you don't believe in that, if you don't believe in, in, in making everyone get along at the gaming table, then, then you can fuck off and I'll stop being your friend. And I think that's, that should be our key thing is that we need to get along at the gaming table. We need to get along. And if someone's not for that, if they're going to take you and manipulate you, and going back to my whole thing about how everyone's trying to manipulate you, this is a very clear example. They're manipulating you. Don't <laughs> let them. Do not let them manipulate you. That's insane. Stop being accommodating to anyone who's trying to manipulate you. Being accommodating to someone who's genuinely asking for help. Yeah. Or someone who genuinely needs help. Sometimes they don't even know it. Some You can see people at the gaming table. I've been a game master, and I've seen a flash of pain cross over someone's face, and I've immediately gone, my God, what did I just say? How, what, did, what's going on? And you know what? I'll pause. I'll grab someone, take them outside, and say, hey, what did I, I said something, and I noticed chill, not so happy. What was that about? And then I'll know. I'll know yeah. what to do and what not to do. Yeah, I had a severe anac uh, arachnophobe in one of my groups and just couldn't handle anything to do with spiders at all, which which was fair enough. So you know, we, we cut back on that, paired it back as much as possible. Yes. Um, and yeah, yeah it's, it's, it, these, are, these are things that do not need to be formalized in game books or oh. contracts or, or anything. It's just What's basic so social interaction. That? What's so hard about this? Like, don't be an asshole. Yeah, you know, but, but yet people insist they be codified, and the you know, and you know why? Because when they codify it, they have power, which yeah. once again means they're manipulating you. They want. Yeah, to, I, I really. You. And, th and this is what extremists always do. You see it over and over again in countries that they they systematize and insist on systematizing everything, and it's just a way they can get control. You know, yeah. a great examples I run. And the the moral police who roam the streets telling women to put their their uh, headscarves on. Yeah. And, and you know I mean, what? It, if we keep letting this happen, we're going to have both the liberal and the conservative version of that in America. But yeah. We're okay. We're not running around saying, "Oh, you said <laughs> you oh you, you have dreadlocks. You can't. That is not allowed. I'm the moral police." <laughs> <laughs> We're cutting yeah. off the hair right now. You get labeled problematic okay. by one side and degenerate by the other. Do, do you claim black <laughs> blood? Well, we're going to have to give you a DNA test, aren't we? Yeah, make sure. <laughs> uh, uh, Anthony Fournier says we all ought to just make some stuff we want to see. Um, well, I think we do, but the trouble is that if you get a particular reputation, uh, just making stuff isn't isn't enough because you can't get it out to people. And there are people who will comb through everything you write, everything you've ever written, and take the worst possible interpretations of it. Um, that, that's probably happened to you, Mark, I would, I would think. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And all it takes is what it doesn't even have to be something you've published. All it takes is one bad day on the internet, one bad reaction, and that chases you forever. Yeah, yeah, no, you say, well, like, you're, you're bad headline, but good yeah. article. You know, we all make a miss. Everyone screws up. And, yeah. and, and no one forgives you anymore. You're, you're haunted for that the rest of your life. And it was literally a 10 or even five second mistake. And then a press of the enter button, you know? Yeah. And, and that will haunt you the rest of your life. That's totally unfair. And it didn't used to be like this, folks. For those of you too young to remember, it was completely different. Like, you could totally fuck up. You could be drunk at a gaming night. Make a total ass of yourself. <laughs> you know, like, tip over the table. Get everyone so pissed off at you that when they finally haul you out of there, like, we're going to kick that guy out of there. And then if you <laughs> happen to show up the next week and abjectly apologize, 
and said how horrible you were and bought pizza for everyone, they more than likely would forgive you and let you play. <laughs> so much forever onto the bridge. Did. That's what gamers did. We forgave yeah. each other. We accepted each other because we were the outcasts. That was what was great about gaming because we were the outcasts and we would never betray each other. Never, ever. We loved each other and we stood by each other and we would never, ever, ever betray each other. That we, pr we protect each other in the outside world. And you know what? That's gone. And now gamers just want to yell and scream and fight. I can't read Cyrillic, so I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce this name. But they make a very good point, fortunately, in English. <laughs> they don't think geeks are outcasts anymore. And I think to an extent that's probably right. I mean, we see role-playing games incorporated into very popular video games, appearing on television in all sorts of ways. Uh, streams, such as the ones my, my friend Satin if, runs, if, are, but are huge. But if you're a role player, come on. In high <laughs> school? In high school, you're a tabletop role player? You play D&D &D and you're telling me like you're with the popular kids? <laughs> I don't think so. I think maybe it's softened Sorry, a bit. I don't buy it. <laughs> I think maybe it's softened a bit, but I think maybe... It's they... definitely softened. But you're not the member of the cool kids, and they're still just like before. There's kids who are cool, and there's kids who are most definitely not. And the kids who are not still get picked on. And and you know what? Maybe if you're effeminate or gay or or a different color or a different race or a different you know religion, maybe that's not as big a deal as it once was. But there's still cool kids and not cool kids, and the not cool kids get picked on. Yeah. Right? I mean, is, yeah. will that ever change? You know? What's cool and what isn't might change, I suppose. But Yeah, but, but still. Not that much. At that age, there's going to be cool kids and not cool kids. Always. Yeah. Uh, Doc Sammy, again, has got a, a nice positive point. Uh, as someone on the autism spectrum, RPGs have helped him a lot socially. Um, I have done games with, with, with people on various stages of the of that scale and other people with other issues it certainly helped me with my own issues. And I think that is something profoundly positive that, 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 Listen, games that, do. that is like, for me, like the coolest thing ever is to hear someone come up to me and say, Hey, your game helped me in my life. I learned something. I, I was able to get past uh, an issue or a problem. You know, I found my wife, I found my husband. You know, this is the stuff that, wow, that that makes me just go, you know, this is incredible. You know, there's yeah. nothing better than to hear that, I must say. Yeah. Honestly, well, there's nothing better in my life. Anthony well, brings, up a, count Anthony brings yeah. up a counterpoint to that, saying if they can be helpful psychologically, then they could be harmful too. Uh, I, I don't really think so in the same way because you can always – stop um, yeah just walk away like that's the thing also that people don't really talk about is that if you don't like something just stand up and walk away like don't make a fuss don't tip over the table <laughs> you know don't swear at people just say ah oh, i can't take it and walk away i mean we all know that there's people who get too far into well anything you know but that's that's a problem that has nothing to do with the game itself or whatever else it might be that, that they engage in this harmful behavior with. It's it's on them, but gaming is at least social, so they will have a, a, a safety net, maybe other people that will notice that they're getting too far into it and, and pull them back. So that's another positive aspect there. Also, I don't think it's really that significantly that different when it comes to the bad side to watching a horror film or going on a roller coaster you know you're, you're deliberately exposing yourself to the horrifying or the scary Absolutely. in those instances and it doesn't scar you for life or anything so no no it's an art form you're, you're you're testing yourself you're braving it and you're doing it in sort of an abstracted way uh, because it's not truly dangerous and that's why we do it you know you're not actually jumping off the cliff you know you're pretending at a gaming table <laughs> But your character is jumping off the cliff, and and, and so yeah, I, I don't I don't believe that that 
that that the negative side is actually that dangerous because it's just so uh, easy to stop. Lots of praise for I Am Zombie and asking what's going on with it. I think you you told us basically. Yeah, yeah. I'll say it again though. We have a huge thing coming out. I'm not sure what's going to be called. Maybe Toxic Earth, but it's be the open game license uh, with D and D type rules. A bunch of new stuff. It'll have. Oh yeah, I didn't mention this. Uh, our whole seventies toxicity vibe um, with with the with the with the hellhole dungeons and and the dis horrible things in the ground. We're we're gonna go full that direction, but yet combined with a modern day surface stuff. So it'll be sort of a weird combination. And I am I am so down with this. This is gonna I'm just we've been working on it every day now and Facebook chat. Uh, yeah, we so I hate Facebook yet. I'm praising it. Um, uh, but we're having just such good brainstorms. I think it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> um, I, I'm quite pleased actually. There's there isn't anything really horrible going on in the chat, and people are discussing the topics we've raised with each other. It's uh, it's, it's nice. That's hopeful. That gives me the the warm fuzzies. But I think I think we're just about just about done. Um, so yes, this is the Mark Reinhagen. <laughs> for those who are, who are yeah. asking, <laughs> yeah, I I got connections, yo. Actually, honestly, right. Just if you want to talk to someone, or it's never been easier. And if they don't reply, they don't reply. So if you want to talk to someone, just just talk to them. Yeah. Every every great thing that has happened for me in my career has just come through asking on the off chance. That and is I so think. true. And, and you know what? The the mega celebrities, of course, are out of reach. You know, they have millions and millions of fans. But I'm not one of those. <laughs> and, and, and if you're smart, you know, the, the people you want to talk to are not, you know, the mega celebrities. They're the minor celebrities, you know, the E-list, as I like to say. <laughs> uh, and, and yeah, I, I try to be nice to everyone. I, I try to write back. I don't always succeed because I have a lot of people writing me. But I do try to write back to each and every single person. Which is very cool of you. And I'm not scary, and I'm willing to talk to anybody whether they agree with me or not. So yeah, yeah, you know, get get yeah, in touch. Right. By the way, you can totally disagree with my politics, and I do not care. I respect people who accept people who have who are different than them, and, and I think this is the fundamental thing that people think like racism is the worst thing, but racism is indeed horrible. But what racism is about is that you hate someone because they're different from you. They're a different race. And that's awful. But what we have to realize that the same way that racism is like the worst thing a, a person can be, that hating someone for having different politics than you is also evil in a different way. You know? And, and, that, and that you have to just learn to, to, to accept people and be open to them and be open and be friends with everyone, you know, and to not be this person who, who hates people because they're different than you. That's fundamentally wrong. And that's the basic wrong about racism. That's the underlying core of it. And we have to accept that and learn that and live that as part of our lives, that we accept and tolerate differences among our friends. Amen. I don't think I can top that as a as a part as a parting message. So, uh, yeah, be excellent to each other, guys. Be excellent. Uh, hopefully, it's be archived so anyone who missed it can see it. If I got the settings right, so yeah. Uh -oh. But um, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Bye, Same. everyone. Ciao.